Howdy everyone, my name is Noah and this is another episode of Life Through the Viewfinder. And I just had to mention at the top of the video here, we are in a new studio space. I mentioned it in my last main video, this is still a work in progress, but this is where all of our videos are gonna be taking place from now on. But with that out of the way, let's get right into what we're talking about this time. So every summer, me and my family go on this trip to the beach, and this year was no different. Now I've been going to this same exact location since I was a kid. It's this really nice, cozy little town in North Carolina, and it's always been one of my favorite places to go. Now there's been a handful of times where I've taken my gear and I've tried to get some photos here and there, but this time I wanted a collection. My quintessential beach experience. And I don't wanna waste any more of your guys' time. So let's get into the pictures. Now this video is gonna be broken up into two sections, my daytime photography and my nighttime photography. Now the first image we're gonna take a look at in this video is this one. This picture is really fun. And it's all thanks to this big building. Now, while I was going around taking pictures, I was cruising on my one wheel, pretty much just searching around for anything that looked interesting. And this was one of the first things I came across. It's just this cool hotel with this really neat design painted along the side. And I had this idea of this 80s looking color palette, the faded film look, and I kind of like those power lines running through in the bottom. It's sort of a foreground element. I just love how blue the sky is and how pronounced the yellow, orange, and blue of that strip along the building are. Moving on to the next photo, this has gotta be one of my favorite of the entire collection. Here you can see this is a classic ocean shot. Of course, the big difference are these giant wooden pylons sticking out of the ocean. Now these are the remnants of what used to be a pier. Now, of course, the rest of the pier is gone, but these giant support beams are still there, and they make a pretty sick hangout space for some of the local birds. As soon as I saw these sticking out of the water, I knew this was gonna be the one. I tried really hard to create sort of a fake fog in the edit. My immediate thought was this would look really cool with a natural fog, but of course, I took this on a very beautiful, sunny, clear day. My initial thought is just how can I make this image look almost a little bit spooky. I mean, we're looking at the remnant of what used to be a very popular location that for one reason or another is no longer there. And I wanted to play into that emotion. So in the editing, I tried to play with a lot of the cooler tones. I tried to create this feeling of nostalgia, a sort of what was. But like I said, that one is one of my favorite ones. But moving on to the next shot, while I was one wheeling around, I managed to pull up to this really cool looking alcove where it looked like there used to be a bridge or something connecting these two sides of this bay. And now it just goes up to this little outcrop where the road just ends overlooking the bay between the mainland and the cape that I was on. And on that little river was this boat. And this is just a cool picture to me. I thought that the framing of it was really neat. I really like the way that there's this little boat attached to this big boat and having this three tiered background foreground creates a really interesting nature Neapolitan between the brown of the water, the green of the trees, and the blue of the sky. And of course, with my editing style, I really love to just blow out those clouds and make them really defined. I really love playing with the color balance of images, trying to push the boundaries of what looks natural and what looks exaggerated. In this image, I think that the way the sky pops and how dark and deep those clouds are with how dark the rest of the image is, it really just brings it all together. Now, in this same area, I was trying to take a picture of this fishing rod that was propped up on a rock just kind of by itself. And that image didn't turn out. It wasn't very good. I was just trying something. But while I was trying to get that picture, my camera's autofocus just shifted with my positioning and I got this picture. Now, like I said, this picture was a complete accident. And on first glance, it's not anything too crazy, but looking into a little bit more, I just thought it was so interesting how symmetrical these two little branches of this vine were. And if I hadn't gotten this picture exactly like this by complete accident, I never would have noticed this really cool, interesting, natural symmetry. So it may just be a picture of vines and leaves, but I thought the story and the vines themselves were just cool. And as our day comes to an end and we begin to enter nighttime, I wanted to show you this picture of the sunset. Now this is just my initial picture of the sunset out on the bay. And we've all seen sunset pictures before, but I just wanted to take a crack at it myself. And of course, I just wanted to make those colors pop, really accent the clouds. And we have that wild grass just creating a cool foreground element. But this is the sunset picture I really wanted to showcase. 
So for those of you who don't know, my wife is a figure skater and she was with me on this trip. So in a lot of the pictures that we're gonna see throughout the rest of this video, the ones that feature her, she is doing a lot of these figure skating poses in these cool, unique lighting conditions. And what better lighting condition is a silhouette at sunset. I love the way the sky looks in this picture and I love her pose too. It is just this perfect silhouette accented by this beautiful lighting. And that's it for the shots that I got during the day. So let's take a look at what night has to offer. Now the night scene at this beach is super, super cool. We love to go on walks on the ocean at night. There's this incredible boardwalk just barely a mile up the street from where we stay, which always has this cool summer festival going on while we're there. They have rides and live music, food, and just everything. And how could I resist getting a dramatic picture of the Ferris wheel? Look, I don't have much to say about this picture. Ferris wheels are just cool looking. They're just very photogenic things. It's hard to explain. They're just big circles in the sky. They're very symmetrical. They oftentimes have lights on them. Ferris wheels just look good in pictures. But another interesting shot that I got on the boardwalk is this one. Now, this is what I would call a texture shot. It's essentially B-roll of photography. This was one of the shops on the boardwalk's door. It was kind of like this veil that you could walk through to enter. But I thought it just looked really cool texturally, the way that it was bouncing the light from all of the rides and stuff off of it. And of course I played with the colors to make the reds really pop. And then the rest of those ones that are kind of gray, they were sort of different shades of red as well as yellows. But I really liked the idea of this being a two-tone image. So I made everything that wasn't these really red pronounced squares, black and white basically just turning the saturation slider all the way down on anything that wasn't this super vibrant red. And I think that it created a really cool effect where it's sort of splitting the image on the diagonal, where the top is that black and white and the bottom is that really, really bright red. And moving on, we got another picture of my wife. After walking around in the fair area, we started to mosey on over to the actual physical boardwalk area. And at night, it looks really, really cool with all of these different wooden structures and some really bright lamps. And as soon as I saw these, I knew I had to get a super dramatic posed picture of my wife. And this is what we got. I mean, this is almost a picture that you would see at a dance recital. It is that super dramatic spotlight beaming down where nothing but their key features are highlighted. Basically, all of the editing on this one was absolutely just destroying the background, making it completely non-existent, and of course, touching up the highlights and the white tones. And I kind of liked the way that little grass in the bottom right was peeking out, so I wanted to make that pop and bring it in as a component of the entire image. But at this point, we left the boardwalk and we hit the beach. Now, the beach at night is just unbeatable. You have that soft breeze blowing in, the moonlight shining over the waves as they slowly crash onto the shore. Absolutely no noise except for the echoes of the ocean all around you. All right, I'll cool it with the poetry, but seriously, I just love the beach at night. And we got a good handful of photos while we were there. Right away, I knew I had to get some long exposures. And that's exactly what I did. And while we were playing with long exposure, I got a little bit of experimentation in. So this first shot is of my brother. And this just might be my favorite picture. This was captured fully in camera, and this was just a pretty standard long exposure. The way I got this effect where parts of his body are darker and other parts are light, almost see-through, was actually a result of me hitting the shutter on the camera. When I clicked the button, it made the tripod shake. And then when it rested and continued to expose, the parts that were standing still got darker, but the parts that were in only the beginning of the image stayed light. Now that fogging effect that's kind of creating a vignette around the image was also physically there. As soon as I took the camera out of my camera case, it fogged up because of the humidity. And I got this picture before wiping off the lens. As soon as I saw this image, I thought alien. So I kind of leaned into that where I made the silhouette really dark, but then I wanted to make everything around it like an alien planet, like Mars. And I think the result ended up being pretty sweet. In these next couple images, we were playing with light. I brought with us to the beach this little headlamp that has a normal flashlight, but also a red light. And while we were still doing long exposures, I wanted to see if I could get a cool light streak. And we got this as a result. So again, this is a really cool picture, just a really simple long exposure where I'm trying to have her stand as still as possible. And then I go behind her with the light, shaking it around. Now you might be looking at it and thinking, she's not in focus or why is she so shaky? Again, it's like what I mentioned before. When I click the shutter button on the camera, 
it shakes the tripod and it creates that really hazy, shaky effect. Now, if you don't like that look, your camera probably has a shutter delay. You can turn that shutter delay on maybe one or two seconds, and that way it doesn't take your picture for another second or two after you take the picture. But I personally like the shaky effect, so I didn't opt to take that approach. But that is gonna take us to the last picture of this video. While we were at the beach at night, and while I had this headlamp, and while the moon was so big and bright, I really wanted to get a shot where the subject was primarily lit by this red light, but then we had the moon as the backlight. And we ended up with this. This is just this really cool picture. I think this picture is really cool and it definitely checked all the boxes for what I was trying to do. We have that sharp red light highlighting her entire face. And then I really blew out the highlights in her hair because that's what was catching that moonlight. So you can see on the edge over here, that bright white moonlight. And of course, this was taken at a super wide aperture. So all those lights in the backgrounds have this really, really blown out bokeh. And I just love the way that this picture turned out. And that is going to be the end of this episode of Life Through the Viewfinder. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. And if you wanna see more of me, you can follow me at these places, including my website, where as soon as this video comes out, I'm gonna be posting a blog that includes more pictures from my trip that I didn't post here. So if you want to see more photography from my beach trip, go check out anrpics.com. And if you'd like, leave a comment letting me know which picture is your favorite, or if you have any places you'd like to see me go, or photography subjects you'd like to see me tackle in another video. But that's going to be it this time. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and of course as always, goodbye forever.